So when Rob Riemann came to me and asked me to address this conference, number one, I was very proud and happy. I know since long the Nexus Institute. I know the incredible work it does since years. I know what incredible space of democratic debate and of nurturing of European values it is. I know that Amsterdam is the place, thanks to Rob Riemann, his team, and the Nexus Institute, of one of the last real place of high level and free debate and discussion on liberal values. So I was very happy on the principle and proud. But I was happy also to accept his proposal in order to try to understand what was really happening in this Kurdish scene. In a sense, it appeared as a very tiny event. Who cares about the Kurdish people betrayed since one century? On and on. For me, coming from there, coming from Irbil, coming from the battlefields where I filmed shoulder to shoulder the valiant Peshmergas, it appeared to my eyes as a big date as a real moment of the secret calendar of the modern world. Sometimes you have events who look like huge events, turning point of civilization, and they are not. When Roma was sacked by the Gallics uh, in 380 something before Christ, the whole world believed that it was the end of the world. It was not. It was only the, it was a, a fake alert. It was only the beginning of the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire. Sometimes when the Greeks are defeated in Chérone by the Macedonians in 368 before Christ, or when the Macedonians are defeated by the Romans, in Pitna, you don't know. The, co the people, the wit direct witness of the event, don't feel it as a huge thing, and it is. It is a turning point of the current civilization. When I saw Rob Riemann, when he asked me to deliver this address, my idea was to try to understand myself and to try to share with you the reply to the question if it is the sack of Roma or if it is Chérone, if it is a big date or not a big date of our modern calendar, my feeling was that this battle of Kirkuk, let's call it this way, was and is a real turning point in our world. And this was really despairing and terrifying for those who had eyes to see, ears to hear, and position to, to feel the real proportion of the situation. More serious at the same time, when America was laying down arms and was Silent, uh, keeping silent, other countries began to speak and to shout and so highly in such a, a strong way. The silence of America was covered by the heavy voices of other actors, by the heavy voices of a bunch of countries which I believed 
which we all believed 30 years ago that they were out of the game or that they were uh, actors of second rank in the big world play and who suddenly became the only speaking actors. So the second thing which appears at the very moment was when America shuts up, when America disappears in a sort of pre-Columbian nothingness, the second thing which appears, which happens, is five ghost powers taking flesh again. It is like in the antiquity again, like in the in the Greek mythology, the, the living deads of the Acheron, of the Styx, uh, uh, resurrecting, reviving themselves and fighting the newcomers. This is the sort of impression you can have when you see this orchestra of Erdogan, of uh, Abadi, of the Ayatollahs, of the weak Mr. Putin, but acting so strongly. And what is currently happening, third point, is not only that they are ghost empires, or empires which we unaccurately thought to be dead, but we, who, were, who were not, because at the end of the day, why not? Why not a Persian empire? Why not a strong, Russia, of course. But the real problem is not only that we were mistaken, not only that they are ghosts, but the real problem is that, not to say more, they don't embody really the values, the liberal values, the democratic values, none of them, for which we are gathering here under the umbrella of the Nexus Institute.